Mayo, play Signalis. Now. Stop everything you are doing. Play Signalis. Okay. Wow, Sifu has some stiff competition for my game of the year. Signalis recently came out, and I love it. If you know my channel already, that should come as no surprise. Signalis is a retro-style, top-down, slow-paced, exploration and puzzle-based, gory, sci-fi survival horror game, with the aesthetic, sound, and level design of Silent Hill, and inventory management of Resident Evil. It's like it was specifically made for me. I may talk about a lot of fast-paced shooters on this channel, but my favorite gaming genre is survival horror. I worship the 90s classics, I celebrate its return with the RE2 remake and new original titles in the indie scene, and now we welcome a game that deserves to be placed in the upper echelon of survival horror titles. Not quite reaching the greatness of games like the original Resident Evil and Silent Hill trilogy, but achieving excellence nonetheless. I was immediately struck by the mood set by the menu, truly ominous. There's a gameplay option for normal or survival, and of course I picked survival because I know this genre well. I did a second playthrough on normal just to feel it out, and I think if you're a survival horror rookie, it'll probably be okay, but for anyone who wants the real combat decisions slash resource management experience, play on survival. This option should be presented to the player when they start a new game, instead of just being in the settings menu. I love the graphical option to play in CRT mode, but I didn't record with it because it messes with YouTube encoding, which I learned while watching the Signalis review from Avalanche Reviews. Great review, Jared. I hope it gets people to buy this game. Right away, I'll just say that, if you love good survival horror games, someday saying you haven't played Signalis will be as unacceptable as saying you don't know what Silent Hill is. It's that good. My experience so far with Signalis has been pretty unique for me. It is not very often that a game makes me want to study its story and dive into its lore. But Signalis, by my second playthrough, had me so interested in what was happening that I created WordPad files just for questions I had. As I continued to think more about these characters and the world, I started asking myself, who is this person? Why are they saying certain things? How does this person know this person? Is what I'm seeing right now happening now or at a different moment in the story? This is a world inhabited by human workers and replicas working in menial tasks, hard labor, and administration during an interplanetary war. Replicas are part robot, so when whatever sickness it is that's spreading finally appears, it utterly decimates the humans, but leaves the replicas in a zombie-like reanimated state. You yourself are a replica, and all replicas are made from their original neural pattern, and each one has well-documented medical history and behavioral patterns, so those in charge know how to manipulate them and provide them with material possessions that soothe their emotional states. But these replicas are starting to have dreams about the lives of their original selves. You are an Elster unit, made for hard maintenance work and combat scenarios if needed. You are on a small spaceship with a human pilot, searching for other planets and alien life, when you crashed on a planet with a replica facility underground. Or did you? You set out in search of someone, a girl, perhaps the pilot, perhaps someone in this facility. Is this all happening now, or is it a memory? Is it a dream? Part of the fun of Signalis is figuring all that out. I am fascinated by the story and lore of Signalis. I'm piecing it together slowly as I replay it. There's a lot to discover, and I'm having a great time with it. It takes a special game for me to lead off with the story, instead of gameplay. That's usually what I care about the most, and believe me, we'll get to that soon enough. But Signalis's world, history, mythology, all of it has me very intrigued, and I'm just really happy to be able to say I like a game's story on this YouTube channel, because it's usually something I find uninteresting, or it's just told in a horrible way so I don't care and I get right into the gameplay. But am I saying this story is told in a good way? Not necessarily. There is something to be said about leaving all your story and world building to readable documents in a game, but in Signalis' case, it's not going to get much across without asking you to read a lot of them. Games like Resident Evil and Silent Hill definitely have notes lying around, but they spread them out, with large sections of gameplay between story beats. 
And it never feels like you're just walking from room to room, reading page after page of background giving notes. They appear here and there. They're short, usually. So it's not a big deal to stop and read them, especially if you're getting into the story and want to know more. Signalis, however, is a note-reading kind of game. You'll find three notes in a single room sometimes, other times two and a poster. It feels like most rooms you enter will at least have something you can read. And it's not like you can just ignore everything. Some of the notes have important clues for puzzles. My one harsh criticism of Signalis is this. I found it very hard to stay excited about figuring out this world on my first playthrough. The note reading is a persistent interruption to gameplay, and after six to seven hours I just started speeding through every note because I wasn't really grasping the situation anyway, and I just wanted to play, man, because the game is really fun. It wasn't until the last hour of Signalis that I really got pulled into the story. Things became more intimate and focused, and I started feeling for these characters. It inspired me to dedicate a second playthrough to just reading everything and deciphering whatever I could on my own, before diving into online forums discussing theories, which I'm very interested in. So it's kinda weird. I am now at the point where I love going back and reading all the notes and looking for clues. Now that I've fully experienced the gameplay, I'm having a good time with it. But it doesn't negate my first playthrough experience where I found the overabundance of notes to be detrimental to my enjoyment of the game. I wish Signalis had consolidated some notes and conveyed some of this information in more engaging ways through more cinematics, or maybe hearing it on the radio. You've got this radio device and they never use it in a way where it's like you're walking down a hall and suddenly you pick up transmissions and listen to people's audio diaries while you explore. That would have been awesome. So yeah, that's my main criticism. I don't know how well anyone's going to interpret Signalis' story for a while. I'm sure there is a real answer to everything according to the creators. There's so much detailed world building, I don't think it's a story where all interpretations are equal, but the game definitely presents itself in a way to be interpreted, because it's not straightforward in its storytelling. The interpretation process is absolutely an exciting part of figuring it all out, but I have faith that eventually someone is going to lay it all out in some kind of definitive manner that only leaves certain details to interpretation. The last thing I'll say is, and this is a spoiler for a twist at about the 70% completion mark, so skip ahead to this timecode if you want to avoid it, there is a cinematic that plays that feels like the end of the game. I got to this point and the credits rolled, but it's a fake ending. Thank God, because if the game had ended here, I would be much less positive about it. I was left sitting there thinking, oh, that's it? Wow, there really should have been more. I didn't even get a final boss fight and I have all this ammo ready. I finished watching the credits and the screen said end, so naturally I assumed the game was over and just ended in a very unsatisfying way. But I did notice something weird. The menu screen gave me the option to begin, when all this time it's been giving me the option to continue. Also, the close-up of Elster's face now has blood on it, something I overlooked. I pressed begin, and it started me in the same place, so I figured, okay, this just starts the game over, and I don't want to do that right now, and I closed the game. I reopened it later, and now the menu went back to giving me the continue option. I thought that was weird, but I didn't look into it any further, and I started making my notes for my opinion of Signalis. I started watching some videos on YouTube talking about the story and the multiple endings it offers, and they all talked about a fake ending. And some videos were showing gameplay of areas I never saw, weapons I never found, puzzles I never solved. And I thought, what the fuck is going on here? So I reloaded my save right before the ending cinematic, I rewatched it, sat through the credits, selected the begin option, and sure enough, even though it starts you in the same place, it's not the same situation. Pieces of the story are introduced that drew me back in, and whole new locations are seen. There was another three to four hours of game to play. It was insane. Those next hours elevated the game to new heights and led me to love it way more. Now, I have mixed feelings about this. On one hand, it's cool. Okay, fans of Signalis, you hear me? I'm saying it's very cool. But it's also something that's going to leave some players thinking the game is an unsatisfying experience. I mean, how many people immediately choose to replay a game right after they believe they've finished it? A lot of people are going to have to hear about this feature from someone else, or they'll completely overlook it. I think the begin option should be changed to say wake up. 
That would definitely have drawn my attention without making it obvious that what I had just seen was a fake-out ending. Alright, enough about the story already. What do I think about the actual game? Well, I love the way it looks. Every location was interesting to explore, creepy, and at times disturbing. Just when I was starting to get tired of the starting area, which admittedly is quite long, the game put me into the mines, where not only do we get a change of scenery, but we get an isometric camera angle. A very welcome change that unfortunately doesn't come back in any other levels, and the mines are quite short. Eventually we dive deeper into this nightmare, seeing flesh consume the world, in areas that are so Silent Hill 1 it left me jaw dropped. I've been dying to see that classic, fleshy, rusted metal nightmare world for decades, and now Signalis is perfectly recreating it while also putting their own spin on it. This section is even called Nowhere, and that's exactly what the last world of Silent Hill 1 was called, exploring a map that doesn't make sense, mashing together spaces that logically shouldn't go together, reflecting the unpredictable and unstable nature of a bad dream. Monsters are very Silent Hill inspired, namely Silent Hill 3, gory and deformed. The atmosphere is always unsettling, at times horrific, but I wouldn't call it scary. I never felt scared by Signalis. Nervous, yes, but if you're looking for scares, this game doesn't really provide it. And that's okay, but it also didn't inspire dread the way that Silent Hill games do, where I just don't want to see what's waiting for me in the next area. So it's a creepy game, great horrific environments and creatures, but not exactly a fear-inspiring game. The music sets an appropriately unnerving mood, with spooky ambience broken up by occasional relaxing melodies. One of the save rooms, in a tribute to Resident Evil 1, plays Moonlight Sonata. When entering combat, the music changes to industrial tones, incredibly reminiscent of Silent Hill 1. As you're exploring the maps and learning about the world, fighting for your survival, you'll be managing a very tight inventory, which is somewhat of an area of contention amongst players. Some people really like the ultra-limited inventory, Chris Redfield style from Resident Evil 1, where your six spaces were always full and you had to run back to the chest a lot. Some people understandably want some more breathing room, Jill Valentine style with eight spaces. I'm going to weigh in here and say I think 6 spaces is fine, but it does cause too much backtracking to free up space. I'm all about the Resident Evil backtracking chest usage, but the constantly full inventory does become unnecessarily tedious, even for a survival horror veteran that loves this kind of stuff. The main contributor is the health pickups. There are way too many. Playing on survival mode, I should not be finishing the game with 15 to 20 extra health packs. Ammo counts are pretty good, but half the health items in this game need to be cut out immediately. That alone would release a little pressure regarding your inventory space. The other change I think would make the game more enjoyable is making the flashlight something that's just automatically with you and doesn't take up space. Bind it to another button. There are so many dark areas, walking around without the flashlight will regularly lead you into bad situations, and pitch black rooms where you literally can't progress without the flashlight because doors won't open without being lit up first. I don't think it contributes anything to the experience other than frustration, having to either always use up an inventory space just to be able to see, or having to go back to the chest all the time just to get the flashlight again. These two changes, cutting back on health items and making the flashlight a separate slot, I think would make Signalis a smoother gameplay experience for both newcomers and veterans. In an odd decision, you can destroy ammunition to make space in your inventory, but you cannot destroy health items. This too would really help. And you can't use health items if you're at max health. And if the developers feel this makes things too easy somehow, well, I'd love to see a higher unlockable difficulty option after beating the game. Combat in Signalis is very simple, as it should be. Classic survival horror isn't about action. You don't need to be able to target 10 different body parts to make the combat fun. You're slow, your options are limited, and the fun comes from managing those limitations. Emptying a few rounds into a far enemy, using a stun rod on another, stomping them to death, and then lighting them up with a flare, because they come back. Yes, fans of Resident Evil 1 Remake will be quite happy to see that the Crimson Head mechanic is in Signalis, and it's a big part of the game. It seems that any downed replica unit can come back, and using a very small supply of flares, you can take them out permanently. 
You'll also find a flare gun, but it only holds one round, so you'll have to use a precious second inventory slot to hold extra. You'll of course want to use these flares on enemies that occupy spots on the map that you'll be passing through frequently. It's a great mechanic. Playing conservatively on survival mode will set you up nicely for the first boss fight, who is going to destroy your resources if you're not ready for her. There are a couple boss fights in the game, I wish there was one more. I think the last one is pretty solid, but the first one leaves a lot to be desired. It seems to be based on just finding the right spot to stand in and wait to shoot when she's stunned. Kinda boring. The maps are very well put together. They feel more like Silent Hill maps than Resident Evil, with all the broken doors, lots of puzzle items and riddles, and those very Silent Hill 2 moments of jumping down further into the unknown. There are many puzzles, and they're the best part of the game. Let me make this clear, this is a game made for classic survival horror fans. If you're new to this genre, and you thought the Resident Evil 2 remake puzzle with the chess pieces was too much of an interruption because you had to reread the riddle a bunch of times and think and experiment to solve the puzzle, this is not a game for you. Just thinking of the puzzles on my own from memory, at least 10 came to mind. These puzzles are all over the place in terms of design. It may be something as simple as turning your radio to a certain frequency to get a code that unlocks a safe. It could be a Resident Evil 3 style puzzle about hitting different switches to equal a set value to power up an elevator. It could be a diary entry that gives hints as to where to put tarot cards. They're all superbly made. It is not a game full of match the strawberry puzzles, thank god. Some of the puzzles are pretty simple, but puzzle quality isn't about making every puzzle really hard to figure out. It's about spacing out different levels of puzzles throughout a game so that it ramps up here and there, but doesn't always crush you with something that takes 10 minutes to figure out. There's so much variety here, but there are no slide puzzles. Because, everyone say it with me now, Slide, slide puzzles, puzzles do, do not belong in survival, survival horror, horror games. games. Thank you. You'll find a camera that can be used to take screenshots of information that can be pulled up later while solving a puzzle. Or you can take a picture with your phone, or pull out a notepad and write it by hand like the old days. I was thrilled to be opening WordPad and writing down values and clues, pulling up images of patterns I had captured and applying them to puzzles in other rooms. It's so classic and so satisfying. This is exactly the experience I've been looking for, and I'm sure there are a lot of people who've been hungry for something like this. Signalis is without a doubt, in my opinion, the best survival horror game since Cry of Fear, maybe even Silent Hill 3. With a couple changes, it could earn a seat at the top with the greats. Hell, it may even earn that spot for a good number of you. I'm gonna end this video with a list of small observations, some positive, some negative. The opening of Signalis reminded me of Duskers, with the old computer booting up. Really nice. Sometimes you can enter a room and an enemy can be right in your path, causing you to take damage. It's bullshit. There's an issue with unlockable doors where after you unlock them, you have to reposition yourself to enter, when you should just be able to go in. This can cause you to be standing there for a second or two, taking damage. I love that my character never speaks when observing the environment. I hate that modern trend where characters constantly have to be making quips or voicing their thoughts out loud. Having everything be text at the bottom allows me to stay immersed in the environment, fly through text quickly, and sit and read slowly if I want to. You can't customize your controller layout or keyboard layout, which is unacceptable. The inspect option in Signalis is severely underused. Since the default animation for items is for them to be spinning in 3D, having an inspect option doesn't really do much. And unlike Resident Evil 1, there are no hidden buttons to be found on items, or hidden inscriptions, or books that can be opened by clicking on the foredge revealing a hidden item. It was really disappointing to see this feature play basically no part in the game. Okay, I think I've said all I want to say about Signalis. Buy it, tell people about it, it is without a doubt one of the greatest survival horror games ever made. Goodbye.